In any case, these three layers feed four loops inside this beast. So back with Bob Marley, you know, I can basically grab that loop. There's, there's a loop of what I just played. That loop is only layer one. I can bring layer three into its own bus architecture. And now we have a, a loop on layer three as well. And so I can grab four loops on this thing and hold them, you know, as in keep them infinitely. I can play over top of them without adding to those loops. Which is really nice, you know, it's very flexible. You can do all this very quickly. And then I can feed those loops to a, a, simply a reverb. And the reverb inside this curves, well, you judge for yourself. I love this reverb. It's an amazing reverb. It'll go on for days. So I can actually lock that reverb and it'll just stay. Its timbre will shift, but its density will stay. And basically layers one and two have their own bus that can feed the reverb, and layer three has its own bus that feeds the reverb. So you can have wet and dry happening on this thing at the same time. And it's all very playable, and it's all basically what you're feeding it in real time. So yeah, I'm feeding it a CD, obviously, and you know, manipulating it. A lot of the times I work with other musicians and take their live signals and basically can you know improvise within an ensemble. I think pretty effectively with this unit, and you know, it's a very interactive thing because I think this instrument has nuance and being that it's real time, you're interacting with the other players just like you're playing a traditional instrument. And uh, that's not to say that the people you're playing with are playing traditional instruments either, you know, but it's just great to play with other human beings and take those signals in and interact with them. You know, other situations might have a mic out the window, the luggage store, you know, it's the perfect place to put a mic out the window and embrace what's happening outside. Shortwave radio, another great sound source. And, you know, the other thing is you can be mixing, and this is my small setup. Um, I do have a larger mixer and I you know, bring out the big guns when I'm playing with an ensemble typically, but this is probably my solo rig. Um, but you know, with the big guns, uh, it's possible to, well, I just forgot what I was going to say, so it doesn't matter. Do um, some big gun stuff. Big gun stuff, got to break out the big guns. Uh, so yeah, we're back to this playable instrument, this world. This reverb's still going, by the way. And so I can unlock it and let it fade away on its own. And even its tail now fading away on its own will, you know, last another minute or so. But I have a control so I can make it go quicker. But if I decide, I can freeze it again. Now it's staying here frozen. Or let it go and decay a little more. Freeze it again. Very powerful stuff. And basically, you can play over top of this without adding to that beautiful reverb tip. Um, powerful, powerful stuff. Oh, yeah, I was going to talk about mixing in multiple sources into the sampler at once. Shortwave, feedback, other musicians, mic out the window, CD player, whatever. You're playing keys on the sampler, manipulating these controls and everything else, and manipulating what you're sending. To that sampler. It is pretty cool and fascinating to me as a performer how some of that unfolds in real time. So in a sense there's a wild card to a lot of all this and you're responding to it and reacting to it just as the listener might be as well. Um, all right well so you were starting to go into the the feedback thing earlier the feedback generator. Yeah. Uh, do you want to go over that for a few minutes? Sure. That's probably my primary sound source for sampling. And this is a Lexicon PCM70. I've been using it since 1988 and discovered pretty early on that this thing can make sounds on its own. And those sounds can be quite compelling, actually. In fact, I'll give you an example of some of the raw sounds the unit is capable of. Volume control. That's what's feeding the sound. 
sampler. But this is just the raw sound. So if we take that raw sound and actually bust it into the sampler, um, and I'll turn off the Marley just for now, you know, we can now hear how the feedback um, factors into all this. It's more tonal, more abstract. You can add reverb very quickly and start to float this thing. Get rid of that resonant filter. Now we're just on low pass, forwards, octave down. And now manipulate the feedback. This is what we're sampling live, and I'm now changing that, so you're going to hear that change cascade through the sampler. Right about now. And the cascade took a while because we've transposed downwards. You know, I can shift the octave and just play some really, you know, low notes. Can add an attack to this, so you get a nice slow attack. These are all instantaneous decisions that you can do, and you know the feedback now is very tonal. It's almost organ-like. Very interactive. You can grab loops of this as well. Preserve those in time. So the feedback is being branched out to separate processing before it even hits the sampler. And one of the uh, channels goes to the Sherman filter bank, and the other goes to the Metasonic Scrotum Smasher. So if we start feeding in the Scrotum Smasher, you're going to hear a more harsh aspect to this feedback. It'll start to be detectable about now. Manipulate some controls and flip some switches you'll hear how that translates through the sampler just by holding these keys down with the sustain pedal. And same with the Sherman. So we can bring the Sherman in is already in. Open up some filters on the Sherman. Maybe change the uh, LFO to something crazy to hear some instant distortion. So the sound is gradually changing. Oh, I have these loops locked in too. on the sustain pedal to let the whole other world go away that's underneath these two notes right now. So that's slowly fading away. Over here. Transpose back up and now we'll get some high pitch sounds in here. And play with these switches again. And so other times, you know, I won't have Bob Marley typically in my uh, CD player, but I may have some feedback that I have sampled that, you know, comes from the PCM70 or uh, other sources. And, and while you're uh, switching the disc.